Well, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Um, so I just want to start out, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do, and, and then we'll get into a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about uh, how your business has changed or what you do in the first place and then how it seems to have kind of taken off in the past year and what challenges you faced and how you've overcome them. And, you know, we're trying out some new stuff here, so we'll get into that a little bit later. But why don't you just start us off and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Eden Castile, uh, Eden Castile Music Studio in Wakefield, Rhode Island. And I'm a singer, performer, piano player, voice teacher, uh, composer, songwriter, producer. I'm a lot of hyphens. Wow. Yeah. And as like every other musician, I just played live all the time until March of 2020. I did teach some online lessons because I used to live in a really remote area where nobody wanted to drive. So I got familiar with doing the Zoom lessons and I, I knew there, the good things about Zoom, but also the liabilities of Zoom for music. Um, it's not really good. You can't actually have like an in-person experience on Zoom. The sound cuts out, right? So if I was playing piano on my end, the singer wouldn't hear it or it would cause a delay. Or if the singer sang with any kind of volume at all, it would make the sound begin to cut out. But we worked within those limitations and it was fine until March when everybody had to work within those limitations. So I uh, started looking around for other options and surprisingly we, we found some. So what all musicians would love to have happen is to be able to play and coach or perform in real time with other people somewhere else mm -hmm. for safety reasons and for distance reasons. And because of the speed of the internet, uh, you're, you can't really do that. But there are actually several programs available right now where you can get really close. And in the past year, uh, a lot of people have been working on that and developing a lot of technology to make it better and better. So I use all of them. Great. So, is that, mm -hmm. so I know, I mean, I've tried using Zoom before and there's, I mean, even with my setup here, I, I see a delay between my the microphone and the camera. And I imagine that's just so much exaggerated uh, when you're working with things that actually have you know time signatures. Oh, it's, it's impossible. So what music teachers do, and what I was doing before the pandemic, what we all do now, is the student has to play music on their end. Like they have to have a second device for karaoke mm -hmm. track or something on the phone, and they play the sound in their space. And then all of that goes into Zoom and the teacher just listens. And so it is asynchronous. So the teacher has to wait and then talk kind of into the void, wait for the student to respond. It's fine, but there are better options. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call, you know, it has latency, right? That round trip of milliseconds from microphone to processor to internet and back down again. So we're always looking for ways to shorten that. If you can get somewhere between, I think, 15 to 30 milliseconds round trip, then it will feel like real time. But so. anything even like up to like 40 milliseconds or so still feels pretty good. It'll sound like it may be an echoey cathedral, mm -hmm. but it's, it's fun. So around, I mean, we all suffered together March, April, May, and it was just more about getting every music teacher I knew onto Zoom because a lot of them had never tried that mm -hmm. and getting the students onto Zoom. And it felt very much like getting people into lifeboats off of the Titanic. But meanwhile... Uh, I knew a lot of professional musicians that were just kind of hunting around, is there anything else? And then we began to discover these programs that had been existing for 15 years already. And they were everybody's, uh, you know, PhD project at Stanford mm -hmm. and places like that and how to use the technology. And they all have names that have the word Jack in them because Jack is the name of the, uh, the open source where okay. that, uh, as I started with this. So the first one was called Jack Trip and it started at Stanford from a guy named Chris Chafe. C-H-A-F-E, I think. And he's still there, and he still teaches it. And then there's a whole bunch that are kind of offshoots of that. Quack Trip. Um, sound Jack is the one that I use a lot. And now there I've are maybe... That. Yeah, Sound Jack's great. So there are about eight or nine that are commercially viable, and there are about 25 more that are in process. Mm -hmm. But there are several that are kind of high-level, you know, or prosumer level. And they can be used by individuals, and they can be used by entire college departments. So the college teachers uh, drove some of this because they had the most immediate need to get those lessons finished for the semester. But for private people like me, I just wanted to be able to play with people. And I missed that opportunity. So I've been able to use SoundJack 
to play live with singers who are 20 miles away, but also 800 miles away. Wow. And the furthest I've ever gotten, I think, is 3,000 miles. And that, so yeah. it, does this handle video too, or is it just audio? Good question. Video is coming. Uh, some of them are a little more advanced with video, but as you might imagine, it does take tremendous processing power to do this. Right. And it's not something you can do with an old iPad or an old iPhone. So you need to have a processor that's you know within a few years. It uh, does work well with the new M1s, works well. I have my computer as a year old, but the one I had that was 10 years old, I kind of got it up and running with this. You need to be Ethernet connected, absolutely. And you need to have headphones in order to trap that sound to reduce that echo. Mm -hmm. So those three things especially. There are things you can do to continue to soup up uh, the availability. And then if you do that, if you run your audio like on a little mini computer called the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. right? then that will free up your computer to then process video. So when I do SoundJack, I will use something like Jitsi that we're using right now to handle the video load. Uh, I chose Jitsi over Zoom because Zoom has a higher processing capability, but Jitsi is low. Mm -hmm. And on Jitsi, you can actually even decrease the bandwidth. So that way That's it cool. takes your power down. Yeah. It has the same problems audio-wise as anything else. So it's usually you know, two systems, and you try to get the best of each system, mm -hmm. or the most customizable of each system. So most music teachers do not need any of this stuff, and they're doing just fine without it. Mm -hmm. I'm super interested in it because I want to get to play with people, and I, there's still going to be months before we get to do that. Right. But I also see a tremendous use for this past a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the person I play for in North Carolina is a jazz singer, and we have a partnership now. We've never met in person, and we are great friends. And she's, I call her my tech wife. So we test out all of this tech together, and we will be patient with each other while the other person's figuring it out. And then we sit and we play jazz tunes. And she said, I'm in, she's in the hills of North Carolina where there's nobody to play jazz. I'm in coastal Rhode Island where there's nobody to sing. So the that's really us, cool. Yeah, we found each other. So that's going to stick. And we get to keep doing that after the pandemic since we can't get on planes that much and we have mm -hmm. busy lives. But we'll drop everything to get together for an hour and just jam. Mm -hmm. So the people who invented these programs really thought it was going to be used that way. They didn't expect it to become a lifesaver, mm -hmm. uh, but it did. It's kind of it just sounds like, you know, the how the Internet came to be right it was just a means of sharing you know studies and and well at the time i think it was a lot of military data but it was just you know faster way of communicating and, and you know i i know a lot of people who you know, play games online and that they've got friends from across the or around the world I, I used to have a friend in, in belgium uh that i've never met um i don't think that we even follow each other on instagram but we connected that way and it was just kind of really cool um, so it's, it's great that this is, I mean, the pandemic is, I, I should, I don't have to say that it's an unfortunate thing, but it's amazing that it has led to these kinds of discoveries and, and innovation that have allowed everybody to connect wherever they are. The, the, the music part of it is very similar to gaming. And that's how we explain it to people when they're thinking about trying out some of this higher level tech is that if you've done gaming, this is similar. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just work for voice, it works for all instruments. You just need to have a way of getting the sound into some kind of an audio interface. I have mm -hmm. a Scarlett Focusrite right here. And so I have one port for my voice and I have another one for this keyboard right here. And I've connected it just with, with a basic audio cable. But you know, you can connect your ukulele, you can connect your guitars, whatever you want to do. And so you can have an entire band rehearsal. It, so all of these started out being peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, many of them are developing servers so you can get a larger group of people online at that same speed. That's really cool. That was actually going to be my next question is how how does this scale? And I know you know when we first started, uh, you know, some of the first projects that we worked on together was your big you know rehearsals with or recitals, I should say, uh, with all your students. And is this something that you see? you know, moving towards a little bit? Maybe, I know you did those every few months, you know, is this something you want to look into as a more sustainable, um, you know, doing this more often than maybe do an in-person concert, you know, a couple times a year or, you know, what are, are you? I think it'll cut, be half I'll and cut half. cut that part out. <laughs> Honestly, I think it'll be half and half. So, um, yeah, for the pandemic, I switched from doing those really fun showcases to doing albums. So uh, I actually have one coming out, my third one since last June. 
is a country album that's coming out in May of 2021. Wow. And the singers have barely been in here. We rehearsed on Zoom, but we also did use some of this tech. We used a different program from Soundjack called Sonobus. Mm -hmm. And that was a really easy one for people to download. And I got my 82 year old student to use Sonobus. So that was, to me, that went absolutely perfect. And it was higher quality audio than anything Zoom could do. And it was a way for us to kind of listen to each other and listen together. But there is kind of a, you know, a mountain you have to get over to do all of this. And every computer fig configuration is different. Everybody's got something a little different. Mm -hmm. So I make it part of initial lessons now that we do a tech check and I ask in my intake form what kind of tech people have and how comfortable they are. And I actually offer this as a service to other musicians and say, I will do tech setup with you and take you through the checklist and evaluate which one would be best for you. You know, it's like speed dating. So for my own students, I don't use it with very many of my students at all, maybe three out of my mm -hmm. whole studio. And only a couple of times have I tried to get all of us together because if one person is frustrated out of 10, it's miserable. Mm -hmm. So I would use it with a really small group first and get those people confident, kind of each one teach one and then send them out to do a few more. So for most, they still don't need this, but for pro musicians, yeah, you need this. Everybody who's crying about, it's so awful that we can't play in person and I so miss playing live, this is part of the solution. I did do a concert in January where I taped it live, but all of our rehearsals were done with Soundjack, me and my pianist. And he mm -hmm. heard me perfectly and I heard him perfectly and we lived 50 miles away from each other. So it was great from a safety standpoint, but also just from a gasoline standpoint. Right. That I just sat in my room and printed out stuff and sat here and sang and didn't have to drive to rehearse with him. I mm -hmm. loved that. That was great. Why would I want to go back? Right. Yeah, well, and you, no one has to load in a, bit, a whole drum kit into the back of their sedan. You can just play in your room. And I, uh, when I was in high school, I did a lot of sound stuff you know i was in the theater group so i would help do sound setup and i i always tried to be in a garage band i was never good enough but that didn't <laughs> that didn't stop my my stop. Uh, desire um i don't even play the guitar anymore it's just you know I, I can't get rid of it it's it was too big a part of my childhood um for those listening i have one next to me and, and eden has a ukulele next to her i do uh, i kind of know how to use i got two chords yeah, we're, we're kind of twins a little bit here. <laughs> um, how long do you think it, it took to, um, you know, really, like, did you see a, a dip at all in just, I'd say momentum, you know, and, you know, business aside, just, you know, how long do you think it took or, or talk a little bit about that transition from, you know, maybe this will last a couple of weeks to, okay, it's not we need to rethink everything. Yeah, I remember uh, sending out a note to my students on March 1st saying, hey, if you're at all concerned about this virus thing, you can have lessons online, I know how to do them. And then two weeks later, I wouldn't let anybody in. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I gave them as much warning as I could. Uh, and they, they transitioned pretty well. Uh, the ones that really wanted it. I've heard this universally from teachers is that, yes, a lot of people lost students, but the students that left were the ones who were not that interested in the first place, mm -hmm. that it was really incidental. And the ones who stayed are really into it and they are there. Mm -hmm. So, but, so in a way it was just this wonderful refining moment for a lot of music teachers. And some of them were horrified at how many people left, which meant, you know, it's not going right. And some people, I think me too, were amazed at how many stayed. So I did have to offer different things. I had to adjust. Uh, over the summer when it was safe, we did some performing outside you know, on the deck and that was great. But we all knew that we we're gonna need more technology as it got colder. Right. So, and there are some people who have said, I'm, I just can't do it. And I've heard that several times, I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, but what are you gonna do next time? There's going to be a next time so you've got to do it right and we can help you and there are enough people who know something about it now that they can help mm -hmm. well i think it's uh i mean music especially i'm sure you know it's such a it's such a tight community that you know it, there's 
there's not like a natural competition. Like everyone wants to help each other. Like you're all there to make art at the end of the day and have fun and have a good time and play together. Um, so I imagine, you know, if, if someone starts to kind of slip a little, everybody jumps in and tries to help them out, whatever, however they can. Right. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, they do. And you, just because I use this tech, I mean, now, now this has happened, right? So everybody mm -hmm. wants the cool, hot new thing. And so for the past year, we've watched people kind of chase the new tech, shiny thing. And I've been guilty of that too. I'm so excited when I hear about this new stuff. The guy I follow is a guy at New England Conservatory named Dr. Ian Howell. And he had a wife who uh, is a doctor, I think, at Massachusetts General. So she actually saw you know, the wave coming in January and she mm -hmm. told her husband. So he started preparing his entire music department six weeks early when you could still get stuff. Right. And then he started writing about it on his blog. And that's how I learned about Soundjack. He actually wrote the American Guide to How to Do Soundjack. It was invented by um, a French man living in Germany, Alexander Carell. So uh, thanks to Ian, he helped kind of send that information out to everybody so that way the rest of us could learn what to do. We are incredibly grateful to him. And he helped make it more accessible for teachers all over the area. And he tests all the new stuff. So that way he kind of does it so we don't have to in a way. Mm -hmm. And then we all talk about it together in a bunch of different chat rooms. Well, have you found this useful? What works for you? What doesn't? And we share our findings as fast as we can. So that way we can tell the developers and then they can continue to make adjustments. It's really fun to feel like you're contributing to something that's going to better an entire profession mm -hmm. in a time of need. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that I got to be part of that, really. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't think that's how this year would go, but it's, it's how it's went. Mm -hmm. So the best way to, to show people that it works, I have found, is to use it. Mm -hmm. So what Ian has shown is that he, he teaches you how to use it, but then you've got to use it. So what I did is I made you know, silly videos of me performing with a bunch of different people and populated my YouTube channel with it. And I actually got Ian to record me one time. So the pianist was in Boston. He was in a different section of Massachusetts, and I'm in Rhode Island. So we were about 80 miles away from each other, but we were in real time. Mm -hmm. So I sang, That's she amazing. played, he recorded. Yeah, and then we put it up online to show it works. Mm -hmm. And people were amazed. I did that back in January. But we want to show, look, you can do stuff like this. And you do not have to have really fancy equipment. You have to be willing to put up with a whole lot of trial and error while you figure out your system. So it is, it's life lessons. And it's just having to go back and do it again. I was not successful getting sound check set up for the first two months that I tried it. I kept on hitting a wall, mm -hmm. but I kept on reading and rereading the documents, watching you know, the instruction videos, and then finding, finding that person to test with it where she was able to kind of take me through that checklist. Well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Mm -hmm. And then we figured out how to do it. It's really pioneering the, the whole, like, everything about it you know about a year from now i'm sure or less even you know it'll just be super smooth they'll have worked out you know any any kinks that are left and it'll just become the new zoom i think it will so each one has a little different characteristic and they're starting to kind of it's like dating apps they all do a mm -hmm. little different thing so and i won't compare them to anything except jam because is tinder so uh sound jack is like steady right mm -hmm. it's what it's what you're going to marry sound jack and it's a very stable platform. The developer will never charge for it, doesn't need to. It's got about 20,000 users going up to 30,000 pretty soon. And wow. it's moving into servers as well. So uh, small ensembles up to like 20 people. He's had 40 people in Germany all at the same time on Soundjack. Wow. Jack Trip uh, is also really big onto doing mass servers. You have to pay for the time to use the mass server, but if you're a choir and you're trying to get that choir back together again for the first time in nine months, you're willing to do it. So Jack Trip requires everybody to buy the little box which speeds mm -hmm. up just the audio signal, and they call it a jack box. And you plug it into your computer, but it handles all that, so that way it levels all of the computer um, processing capability. So mm -hmm. you got a kid who's got a really old iPad, all they got to use is the jack in the box and some headphones and a processor and they're online. That's huge. It's huge. Especially so, now, like laptops or com like computers themselves are, are hard to come by with the, the semiconductor shortage. Right. So it's great to have that ability to use something that can just process what you need it to. So I didn't know anything about the world of Raspberry Pi or anything like that. I made one. 
Mm-hmm. So I and I use it specifically for sound check, but what we will find is within a year or so, you'll probably be able just to to switch out the cards, and so I can use it with whichever program I want. That's so, really cool. It's really cool. So it, I definitely notice a change in speed, even on my fast computer. Having the audio run on that definitely took some of the processing speed off. Uh, the other low latency programs include one called Jam Kazam, which is much more social. And they, they do, they have some social aspects of it where mm-hmm. you can put your profile in, you can talk, well, I'd like to jam with jazz people. Oh, I really like Santana. And you can have a room online where you sit there and people will come into your room and jam with you. Wow. And you can record it. And on Jam Kazam, they do have a video component. Again, you need a strong computer to do it, but you can actually see them. But it's also kind of fun to not see them Mm -hmm. and just listen and focus on the sound because, and actually that sometimes feels like a real rehearsal when you're just listening to sound. So the longest one I did is I played with a clarinetist in Barcelona on Jam Kazam and we did Moonlight Serenade and it sounded like he was sitting next to me. That's incredible. It was incredible. So each of them have different features. There is no one place where you can get a guide on all of this, except maybe Wikipedia, Mm -hmm. uh, which will, if you go under like low latency programs or ultra low latency, you can see some of this comparison and you can see what each one does. But the best way is to just go ahead and test them. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I've seen in people in the past year is that everybody's looking for the plug and play solution for everything, right? right? The plug and play vaccine. The plug and play mask, plug and play uh, this option, and there isn't one. Mm-hmm. All of them require you to know more about yourself, the tech that you have, and what you want to do. But then when you know that stuff, that's information you get to keep, and that's valuable right. information. Oh, anytime you learn something, that's a good day. Yeah. It's a bad day if you don't learn something. That's right. what Ron Cowie's dad says. So it's true. And it, it's thrilling to think that, you know, an old dog can learn tech tricks. I didn't think I'd be doing any of that. I didn't think I'd be using Logic Pro and producing albums, but that's great too. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. It makes you feel good. And it, well, it's we, nice, so, the skills I get to keep. Right. So uh, are, are you familiar with Clubhouse? Yes. So uh, couple, you know, A, do you see I think I know the answer to this, but um, (laughs) do you think it has a future? And B, how do you think its existence kind of ties into all these other uh, platforms and quasi-social networks? I have a membership. I've been on it like twice Mm -hmm. because I think I'm probably a little bit older than the average Clubhouse user. Uh, But I do see musicians already starting to use it as a virtual jam session. Mm Mm-hmm. And I see them using Discord for some of that as well. I'm a lot more familiar with Discord than I am with Clubhouse, but I, um, when I was using it, you know, back when I used to play on a server with some people, I, uh, I, I liked how simple it was to use. I think gamers are much more mm-hmm. willing to try, you know, that new tech as a way of connecting with each other. Mm-hmm. Musicians are less so. And some of that's, I think, a cultural thing that musicians think we have to all play together in the same space, breathe each other's air, see each other's eyes. But this year has kind of proven not always. It's nice when that happens, but it's not completely necessary every single time. Mm -hmm. So, but with gamers, I think that's just built in that they see a screen, so they don't even, it doesn't even, you know, consider to them. But musicians, I think the next generation of musicians will consider this normal. So I think there will actually be more of a premium price to have in-person stuff and that the online stuff will become more normal. So, oh, you want a Zoom lesson? It's that. Oh, you want in-person? Well, I have to Mm -hmm. disinfect if you're in-person. you got to get tested. So that's going to be a premium. Right. And you also got to destroy my carpet. So I don't know. Well, and you have to leave the house or or they, you know, you have to make sure you clean the house, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. direction it's going. It's so much easier to do it this way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even just having meetings, like I've had concept meetings uh, this way, and it's just so much faster. It's like, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a, you know, half hour conversation. We can do it this way, too. There's no, I, I think some of the salespeople I've worked with in the past, you know, they, they miss having the, you know, being able to read body language a little bit better. Um, but for everything else, like this is, this is the way to go. I hear that that a lot of business realizes this now, that business Mm -hmm. travel is going to go way down and stay permanently down because you don't need to do as many face-to-face meetings. So face-to-face will become the luxury. Right. 
and, and and what a luxury it'll be. I mean, I can't wait to to get to see live music again, and I am planning mm -hmm. my next showcase for May. But I'm also really nervous about it. And every musician I'm talking to right now, we are all a bundle of nerves because we know we're going to have to do this live, and we haven't had to do mm -hmm. it live for a year. Can does it work? Can mm -hmm. anybody still sing? Can we do this? I think we will pick right back up. I can't wait to hear people start complaining about all the stuff they complained about at live performance. Oh, I got to wait in line. <laughs> oh, all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, what a joy that will be to get to do that, right? Do you find that when people are, you know, playing with each other online, you know, their nerves might be in a different place than they would be if they were in person? Like I know as someone who's tried vlogging before, I have no problem talking to a camera that has an unknown amount of people behind it. But as soon as there's someone around me physically, I just freeze up. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something that you're seeing with musicians too, or is it no different? Oh, we all complain about the same stuff online that we do in person. Mm -hmm. I have found, and uh, oh, that that note didn't come out. Redo. What's nice is we can redo it. Right. So um, yeah, and in, in live performance, you get more forgiveness when when things don't go right, and so because you can hear your voice really well, it's really great because you can hear things you haven't heard before, but it's also horrifying because you can hear things you didn't hear before. I noticed that as soon as I started teaching full time online, that I heard my singers doing stuff I didn't realize they were doing. I was so busy playing and thinking about everything else that I missed a lot of the audio. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of want to make it mandatory that we all have to listen on headphones sometimes. So you really hear it. Right. And I have gotten you know, spoiled as far as I love getting to play stuff. And if I make wrong notes, I can go back and just, you know, fix it in post-production. So, but live, I'm not going to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. that's also thrilling in its own way. But that's kind of been when it comes to producing an album or you know anytime you're in a recording studio that's that's kind of how it's always been hasn't it where like live is more authentic in a way because mm -hmm. there are no do-overs um you know except for auto-tune and everything but you know when you're there are a lot of tricks <laughs> yeah um i've been out of that game for a while so i'm sure um but you know, when you're recording stuff, you know, and we do the same thing with, with video, you know, when, when we do a live, when we were doing the live church service or a live wedding, you know, there's a lot more pressure on one hand because there are no do overs, but then, you know, you do have that forgiveness kind of baked in a little bit, um, where on the flip side, if it's recorded, there's almost an expectation of polish and, and that can be paralyzing too, because then it, and, and I know Ron talks about this a lot of uh, you just get too scared to publish so you don't. And doing it live, even remotely, I think it has got to be a way to, to help with that. It's... Oh, yeah. If you find out, you tell me. Um, the, this, the album that I'm do doing in May or the, the live performance is actually a live version of the album that is releasing earlier in May. It's called Peacedale Hayride Volume 2, and mm -hmm. it is nine, ten original songs by nine different songwriters. Wow. So they had to, were just in here this weekend recording, actually. And so this week, or the next several weeks, I'm in you know production, and I'm, I'm going in, and I'm changing all the pitch and making sure it's really accurate, and I'm cleaning up all the tracks. I'm sending stuff out to live musicians to have them play. So I did all the demo tracks here on MIDI. To how I wanted it to go. I created the charts and now I'm sending it out because I want a live feel to it. And mm -hmm. I want real guitar, not my fake guitar with 10 fingers. Right. So all of that is happening. So they will hear something that is a much more polished version of what they actually did. And then I'm making them go sing it live. So they have the thrill of getting to support their own album with a performance because that is usually the way it happens. But I also know it's gonna freak them out big time because none of us have done this for a while. So they're gonna go through a lot of feelings and I'm here to help with all of that. But for all of us, it's kind of a transition, I think, back to live performing. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather that they sing their own stuff than sing covers, which sometimes are less forgiving right. when they're covers, right? Because everybody hears the, uh, the first one in your head. So, and then over the summer, I expect that it'll be kind of a back and forth process where we'll do live because we can and because it's safe with vaccinated people to do so. And then some people will stay online and they'll just be kind of a combination. But, oh, I have beach traffic. I can't make it to my lesson. Well, then I'll see you on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I'll be using this technology from now on. 
Uh, I did teach them all how to use um, an online digital audio workstation called a DAW, right? We work with DAWs. Yours is a Adobe Audition. I use Logic Pro. And there's, a, there's one that's kind of a prosumer level called Soundtrap. And you can basically upload the tracks, and that way the singers can just sit in, sit mm -hmm. in their room and add tracks, and they can see it go by, which is really valuable uh, for cutting in. So I have several singers who used that to add their tracks to the album. So now they have that skill. And this one guy, I thought he'd never use any of the tech. He says, well, just put it in Soundtrap for me. I'll take it from there. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I mean, that's great, right? So they're more comfortable, but it took us nine months to get there. Mm -hmm. So I don't want those skills to go away. Right. I want them to keep those skills. Those benefit me. Those benefits the entire studio. And that makes our reach bigger. It lets us connect with more people. We wrote one of the songs with uh, two producers in Nashville. So these producers, it's um, Tyler Kane and Megan Lindsay. And Megan was on The Voice. So in their Nashville home, they have a studio attached where they will invite groups of people to come in when they're visiting Nashville and write a song with them and record it on the spot Wow! as a kind of a destination, you know, fun mm -hmm. thing to do. I would love to take a group. That was actually on my list of things to do with my students was to go do a lost weekend in Nashville with a few of them mm -hmm. and do exactly that. But because of the pandemic, nobody can go anywhere. So right. they moved that entire experience online. So for two hours, we all met in a Zoom room, and then we used an audio program with him, another different online doc called Audio Movers, to hear the high-quality audio. They created the chorus, and we wrote the verses with them. And then they sent us this completed track. So that way, and Megan sang the vocal, and then we we're taking her vocal out, and we're adding our voices in. Wow. So we get a professionally produced track with our own voices, and then mixed and mastered, and it's all done online. That's incredible. Yeah. I know I've been saying that, but it's it's all incredible. It's, yeah. It's amazing what is what is possible now. So when I, I look at that and I think, why would I ever want to go back to to having to rent out a church hall with a mm -hmm. you know out of tune piano and punch? Right. Bless those who want to do that, and and there's merit in doing that, but I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want uh, people to not only know how to sing, but to know how to handle themselves on stage, know how to handle a mic. To mm -hmm. know the difference between singing live with a mic and singing into a recording. Uh, because that kind of confidence uh, goes everywhere. And that makes you not just a singer, but a performer. So, and I think that's a really valuable thing to have. Uh, most of my singers are adults, but there are some teenagers. And they're all songwriters. And they're all really creative people. So I want them to have the tools to be able to, to create what they want to create. And they don't have to wait for me to do it. And they don't have to wait for me, you know, to rent a hall twice a year or something. They can get on Soundtrap and they can write their own music. They can share it with whoever they want. I think that's really fun. Yeah. And that's unprecedented. You know, that's never been done before. And, and Not now really. The... Yeah. I mean, I don't know a lot of other voice teachers who are doing this worldwide. Uh, there, are, there are some. There are some who will do an aspect of it or they were already doing it before. But to come at it from a teacher level uh, and realizing that this is something I think my students need, and this is getting into heavy philosophy, but the whole reason I think people take music lessons is it's not really the music, it's the recognition. And it's the feelings that music gives you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason I started taking voice lessons when I was 13 was because I, did, I lost out on a solo to Jennifer Suplee. And I wanted to get better right but it wasn't to get better because i want my voice to be great and everything it was to get better to win something mm -hmm. <laughs> and to get awarded a solo that i wanted to get so when people come in and they sing it's not um i want to sing it's tell me if i'm any good tell me if you think i could do this mm -hmm. to a higher level and what am i missing something's wrong right i know i'm missing something so and often the voice is fine what's missing is opportunity and they don't know how to connect to opportunity. I mean, really, nine out of 10 people who call and ask me for voice lessons, it's really, I want voice opportunities. So, and I, I see that that's missing a lot. And in the pandemic, it went way down. Where's the opportunity if all the venues are closed? Where's the opportunity if the theaters that would not, would not cast me anyway, now won't cast anybody <laughs> because they're mm -hmm. closed? Well, the opportunities are online and the opportunities are in recording. And if you have those skills, you never have to wait to be cast again. You never have to wait for the open mic for four hours in the rain. 
you have your own studio, you go write your own music and you release it. Nothing needs to stop you. Mm -hmm. That's incredibly inspiring. Um, before before we go, because uh, I don't want I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you've talked s about so many different successes here, about uh, working with the couple in Nashville and working uh, with a musician in Barcelona, and just keeping these your students connected in this time where everybody's separated. What would you say? You know your biggest success, you know, the, the most, uh, or the biggest experience or most exciting experience that you've had, um, you know, in 10 or 15 years when, and you know, when this is in the next generation's history books, um, you know, what are you going to be excited to tell people about? <laughs> That's a really good question. I mean, I feel like I've been working so much. I barely put my head up, right. To think about that. Ah, <sighs> I think that I will be hosting some kind of an awards for my students and offering some kind of incentives for them to create and perform. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I think we can look back at this time and say, we thought we were stopped, but actually we were just beginning. Mm -hmm. Well put. Well, um, where, when this album comes out, mm -hmm. Um, well, you said it was part two. So mm -hmm. where can listeners or viewers uh, go to find your existing album, your existing work, and everything that comes next? The best place to go is my website, EdenCastile.com. Everything is linked there. I also have a YouTube channel that's linked through EdenCastile.com, but it is. It's YouTube slash C slash EdenCastile. I do a live stream show. Uh, once a week. Right now it's on Friday nights and it's called The Eden Show. And I use some of this technology in it. So not only do I have the faster audio, but I also live stream those experiences. So it feels like you're watching a live show, which is really kind of fun. And I've just started having safely vaccinated people come in. And so we'll end up broadcasting it probably from our living room. And I hope you get to <laughs> help be part of it, which would be awesome. It'd be so, great. So that's available there. You can see the episodes online. And I just work with one person. And conveniently, in order for them to be on my show, they have to have a certain level of tech. So I invite people that I actually want to have work on this tech. And then we have a, a tech checkup at some point early in the week to make sure they have an Ethernet cable, make sure their headphones work, and they know how to use the Internet. Some people pick it up right away. Some people need a lot of support. One guy down in Florida, a jazz singer in Florida, we realized um, his computer was really dead. So two hours later, he calls me from the Best Buy. Eden, Eden, I'm buying a new computer. Will this one work? He bought a new computer to be on my show. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that sweet? He said, I needed a new one anyway. And his wife was with him. Yes, he needed a new one. Mm -hmm. So it, it was great. And he had a satisfying experience because of that. So that's on there and yes the albums are on there as well i have three last june i did one called six feet from stardom which is a play on the movie 20 feet from stardom uh, that was all cover tunes and then in uh, december we released a christmas album of originals called holly days and then this one is peace dale hayride volume two because volume one was actually a live show at pump house music works in peace dale and that was our first country show so i thought why not call volume two? And I hope there will be multiple volumes in the future. I don't think that we will be done recording. I think that will just be part of what the studio does. We'll record our live concerts and release them. And we'll also have um, original, you know, songwriting. I mm -hmm. think actually we're writing a musical at some point too. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, would that be performed um, live or is that is that going to be digital? I think, you know, good question. Probably both. We okay. might workshop it live. Most, most people start that way. So they start with a workshop performance of small sections, and then you kind of build up from there. And then I could see a live stage performance, but I could also see filming it. That's the other mm -hmm. thing that's happened. I mean, Ron and I have talked about that a lot, is that everybody's become a filmmaker in this right. past year. And I don't expect to stay filmmaker forever, and Ron tells me I shouldn't. But I do enjoy thinking that way. I haven't mm -hmm. had to think so visually because he's always been there and you've always been there. But it's nice to, to actually have to think about things like that and to, to think about songs also in their visual element. 
So with the, the Holidays album, we also made videos for every single track. At the last minute, we decided to make videos for every single track. Wow. For this one, it's, it's baked in. So seven of the nine um, people decided to make videos. Two said they didn't want to. And I think they're, they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. So for them, they just get a lyrics video. Uh, but for the other ones, they're thinking about it, and they really know that that helps drive music sales, and it's just another way of sharing the songs. So right. as soon as uh, these go to the mixer, then we start making the videos. So And all of that will be at EdenCastile.com, and we will do like a premiere every other night in May. For wow. Hmm? You have a busy couple months ahead of you. I do. <laughs> I do, but I love it. I really do. Is, is there anything else that you wanted to leave us with? Or don't ask, be afraid yeah. to try something new guys don't be afraid to try something new if you need help ask for it google is your friend but really find one person to kind of test with i mean you and ron have each other to test technology with and i think that's really important ron is not the person i test this technology with so i have wendy in north carolina mm -hmm. and she's musical so she's interested for some of the same reasons i am which right. is great. And so I love talking geek with you. And, and Ron said, oh, go talk with Alex about, you know, this geeky tech stuff that I have no interest in. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, find that person that you can talk the tech with and test it with. And that uh, will do a lot. So don't be afraid to try. And especially if you can find somebody to try with, then mm -hmm. you're going to be successful. And all boats rise. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, Thank you for coming on, um, and I look forward to hearing that album or seeing the album on video form when it comes out. And uh, yeah, thank you again, and look forward to having you on when it comes out in a couple months. You're welcome. Thanks, Alex. Thank you.